There is one fundamental concept behind every single 3D game you've ever played, at least those using polygons, and every CGI clip in every movie you've ever seen. We've talked about models and materials, but what makes things move? Rotate, grow or shrink? There is one master concept behind it all, the transformation matrix. Theory first. But before that, if you are new here, hi, my name is Pavel, I work in game development and I'm a former graphics developer and researcher with a PhD in computer science. Transformation matrix is just a mathematical way to move, rotate or resize objects in space. Let's start with the basics. A point in a space is represented as vector x and y, but before we dive into matrices, let's first look at the classical forms. We have x, which is equal x plus dx, and y, which is equal y plus dy. This is the simplest way to describe translation. However, using matrices allows us to perform these operations systematically and efficiently using the same method, matrix vector multiplication. Uh, most importantly, we can combine multiple operations such as translation and rotation together. Uh, you will see in a moment. So let's express this in matrix form. Translation is just a fancy word for moving something without changing its shape or size. In matrix form, it's written like this. Tx and Ty are how far you move the point in the x and y directions. This is used in video games when a character moves left or right, up or down. Rotation is about spinning an object around the origin. In 2D it looks like this. This matrix rotates a point by an angle theta. Scaling changes the size of an object. If you want to double the size of something, you multiply it by 2. We showed how you can make objects move or rotate. And now you know how to make them grow or shrink. The real power of matrix form comes when we combine these. If you scale, rotate, then translate, you can achieve complex transformations using only one, applied on every vertex. Everything we discussed extends naturally into three dimensions. The translation matrix for 3D looks like this. Rotation in 3D involves three separate matrices for rotating around the X, Y and Z axis. Scaling is also similar, just extend it to three dimensions. Full transformation matrix combining all of these looks like this. By multiplying these matrices in order of scale, rotate, translate, we get a final transformation matrix that applies all three effects in one step. This is the foundation of 3D graphics. If you ever played a 3D game, every object you see is being transformed using a matrix like this. Before we jump into the practical visual demonstration, let's watch an example with actual numbers. Enjoy and relax. Understood? Let's be visual. Here is a 3D scene in Godot with a directional light and cube mesh. I set its material to use a visual shader. You can see an output box with a vertex node connected. This means we are going to change the vertices. This box is for multiplication. In my case, a matrix and a vector. The matrix is transformation matrix written in a slightly unusual, but I guess more obvious way and the vector is my input vertex. Using this, we modify the vertices of my model one by one. I'm starting with a unit matrix, which has ones on the diagonal. First, let's try scaling. I change the x value to two and y to three. My cube transformed into a block extended two times along the x axis and three times along the y axis. Let's continue with rotation. I happen to know that 45 degrees is give or take 0.785 radians. Let's use the correct combination of sine and cosine. As you can see, my block rotates 45 degrees around the y-axis. We can finish up with translation and move our object one unit along the x-axis. The math seems to be working. Who would guess? And that's a quick crash course on transformation matrices. I hope that how games work is now a little bit clearer. That would be all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and want to see more in the future, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.